and welcome back to Panic Butter. Glad you could make it. Thanks for joining us. This is Tony. Got some good ones for you today. Some strange, some creepy. Take you from the androids into the past with some UFO stuff all the way down south. We're gonna look at it. How are you doing today? Let's do it. Here we go. Stack. Nobody could have imagined that robots can be this hyper-realistic. But AI and breakthrough robotics technology have made humanoid robots a reality. So today, I am going to show you some of the most realistic human-like robots. This is a mecha, designed by a Cornwall-based firm. It is designed specifically for human-machine interactions. Just look at the subtle human expressions she's exhibiting. Sophia is a social humanoid robot, developed by the Hong Kong-based firm called Hanson Robotics. It's designed to mimic social behavior. Meet Alex, a humanoid robot that can exhibit 600 human facial expressions. Designed by three friends in Russia, this bot can cost you a whooping $8 million. And finally, we have these hyper-realistic bionic robots, designed by EX Robotics. These bots... That it's kind of creepy. Yeah, that is creepy. But what happens when it becomes just like a cell phone and everybody has one? What kind are you going to get? What do you thought? Have you ever thought about it? What would you get? What would you name it? What would you have it do? Because you know, from the stuff you hear and see these days, you can have it be you. Or be a better you. My mom had a friend, right? Grew up in um, Utah. Seven, maybe she's 18, 19 years old. I don't know, whatever year, 70s, 80s, whatever. Goes on a date with a guy, right? Normal date, just met him, I think at the supermarket. Goes on a date with this guy, and she's um, at the table with him, and she feels very, like a ominous feeling looking at this man. She's like, I'm looking at him, and I can see like there's nothing behind his eyes, like there's just something that I don't like about this guy. So to the point where she has never done this, you know, had never, she was only 18, but since this has never done this, she went to a payphone at the restaurant, called her brother, and was like, can you please come pick me up, like, immediately? And stayed in the bathroom until her brother was outside. Dang. And went in the car and left. And she was like, I'm just creeped out by this guy. I can't explain it. I'm creeped out. All this energy, I'm creeped out, creeped out. Now, he had, this man had picked her up from her house. So the brother had a paper route. He's leaving the next morning at 5 a.m. See some ruffling in the bushes. Okay. Crazy. Right. Uh -oh. Like whatever. Sees a guy running out of the bushes. Ex says, holy shit, whatever. Runs back in the house. Tells his mom and dad. Sister wakes up. Says he was wearing like a beige jacket. She's like, that's the guy I was on a date with. Like that. He was like waiting. He must have been like waiting for me. Right. Whatever. No. Goes way. on. Life goes on. What a psycho lunatic boyfriend. Three years later. Ted Bundy on the news face she was on a date with ted bundy before he had committed any murders or, or, or he had committed murders but had not been famous for it yet had not been convicted of it yet she said when he saw him he she literally almost fell out of her chair because she was like that look she said that ted bundy about you know how you know everyone says he's so handsome whatever she said he would get a look over him when he was preying on a victim which she was felt she was being preyed on that she doesn't even look, he's like he does not look like that his face configures and contorts to something that looks so sinister that she literally was like get me away from him now damn that's a good instinct somebody went with that saved him huh yes indeed you ever had that type of a feeling where you know it's wrong something's really weird hair on the back of your neck is standing up what do you do get the hell out of there that's what you do what are we gonna do now let's go to the next one let's take it back a ways the foes attributed to a mysterious man named martin allen might have actually been shot by walters who researchers say wanted out of the public spotlight watch this accelerating ufo which in slow motion doesn't look like a missile or known craft nor does this which moves like the one in walters beach video here's a similar one in a third clip it shows the craft coming a silver streak, zooming away. Oh yeah, that's pretty crazy. In the 80s even, there was a lot of that going on down there. It probably still is. If you live there, you see it all the time. 
There's a real big hot spot in Gulf Breeze. What do you think? Does it look like anything we've seen today? I think it does. A blast from the past. What do you think? Have you seen anything like that recently? What can you compare it to? I don't know. I look at them all the time. A lot of them look similar. Let's go look for another one. Here we go. No. be something on the well it's up there whatever it is disappear and it's gone just like that weird one not much there pretty strange though a little creepy what do you think Pretty interesting stuff happening in Mexico and South America. Let's look for some more. See where we're gonna go. Here we are. What the heck? Look, this video is being watched. Did the arrival of UFOs in Peru really catch your attention? My race is killing people, my race is removed, and race takes my race away. NASA has confirmed this and the news is confirming it. Give your opinion. Uh, it is pretty strange. Find that the night has become full and fearful. Much of the media has touched on the subject of this unsolved mystery happening in the Peruvian jungle as strange creatures attack residents far from the city. Bravado to black face. For that reason, we went to a small village in the city of Pucallpa and the villagers said they saw these creatures called Pelacaras. We arrived at the village of Miracle in Manantay, Pucallpa, Peru, where the villagers said they had seen the so-called Pelacaras. Now we're going to get some good info. Let's see the pictures. Did they catch one? That's why there is only one. one. So the man who lives in Caser E, or tells us miracles that he is also rude at night. He took us to where he claimed to have seen the so-called Pelacaras. About a week ago, I took a walk here with my friend. We were three firefighters and we saw a very strong light there in that tropical forest. See there? A light came on and we took the right burden. We didn't fire two shots, we didn't go there, we fired two of those two shots. What do we do? So you did fire shots or you didn't fire shots? The lamp. Started to rise and we left. That is to say, no, we can't cross because there is water, but if there is no, yes, we do stop in that direction. The lotus that you saw there. We stood there to see what it was. To me, they are pelacaras called Pistaco. No, many of the people here talk to the neighbors. They are already afraid. They are not worried. We are not afraid. That is to say, afraid of anything that could happen here on a farm without miracles. What if that was happening to you at night? I came here to take a bath for three days. I saw these two pelacaras over 2M and had been terrified, grabbing my therapist. 
and I went to Warren, that's my other relative. And then, of course, of course, I started, they're coming down. It comes from there. And Cornelia and Comisa and Dalia poi da dal paragra e Roma e Devi avvitare is mine. Relatives, I come, they have been taking a bath, that is to say. And there are quite a few children. At least look at these times how you see the children. Where they bathe, they come, they come from the town itself. They come to bathe, they are alone. Sometimes like me, like a nap. Sometimes I see how to take care of them. I am another speaker in the castle. Miracle. Wow. Resident. Pelacaras that they target people with powerful lasers and then remove parts of their organs and faces for use as beauty products and more. What? Yeah, what if that was happening to you? Holy I call the army, the navy. Love Ronderos in our place so that we can stay. Quieter, isn't it? I no longer feel that we are not safe for ourselves because we know that the army and navy can come here to support us. Miracle Farm. They can, but they don't. A lot of questions on that. What you not think? only in Tucalpa, but in the entire Peruvian Amazon region, do people think that residents are persecuted and attacked by so-called collective hysteria, myth, or reality? We don't know. To be sure, these people were attacked by these strange creatures. Draw your own conclusions. Yeah, that's pretty strange, huh? Need more info. It is pretty interesting to see, but what is it? Who is it? There's a lot out there, a lot of opinions on who it is. Pretty crazy. One day, though, somebody's going to catch some, and then we'll know for sure. What do you think? Pretty good. Where are we going next? This is Peru 2023. Look at this group of people playing on the beach. Suddenly, a huge outline appears in the clouds and an unidentified object, which looks like the classic flying saucer, UFO, is obviously an unidentified object. Look at this. We are in slow motion. Look at this. This is the filter I added. What? Oh, there we go. The filter. But is this object like this? It's really impressive. Tell me what you think in the comments. This is my YouTube channel, which you can find on TikTok. Come to me and look at the circle. Hmm. There's a little bit there. It's pretty creepy, pretty strange. I don't know. We need more. I have to go check it out and see what else he's got to offer. What do you think? Pretty cool. How's your day going? If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and join us. We're growing. Now, where are we going next? So we all know that the Walmart down there in Galveston, Texas is really, really haunted. Well, in Mexico, they actually have something that's like a Walmart, but instead it's called Soriana. Just like Walmart, there's a lot of Sorianas that are spread out in different ranges of Mexico. This YouTuber named Raul Garcia actually was the one that captured this chilling evidence of this haunted Soriana. In the video, it shows that he is the only one in the store. Most likely, he is the security that's just making sure everything is okay late at night, when suddenly... Raul sees some chilling things that he cannot explain and after watching the video that I'm about to show you I I give props to Raul because honestly he took it like a G and he was not scared or face watch this so in Mexico they have ghosts in Walmart up here we call them people of Walmart uh -huh. there Yes, this is the first thing. No mother, no mother. <laughs> Cancel. Why is everything torn down? Where? Almost all the rubbish comes from. Don't suck. Uh oh, it's on now. Let's 
see if we can catch it. Is there anything wrong now? What's up, man? <laughs> Click on the key out. Here. Hello, friend. How are you? You are? I'm not here to bother you. <laughs> He's gonna freak you out, probably. Watch it start moving or fall or run or... Uh-oh. I'm going to see you. It has no batteries, no stains. Get us see. If it's being recorded, I don't know. That thing is about 2M without spot. What part? Don't get dirty, don't get dirty. When will you finish? Freaky. Please send your greetings to my friend. None of the farts are connected, are they? This is in a Walmart. Remember that. No Karens in this one. Dang it. Don't Whoa. get dirty. Oh, yeah. Whoop out, whoop out. Ha, ah, yeah. He's still standing there, too. Are you okay? You're even connected. Don't get dirty. Hey, fat man, are you all right? What nonsense? Yeah, that's pretty strange. That's in Walmart, too. Not like the Walmarts we have in the United States, huh? We have a little different kind of creepy, strange, and uh, oh my, especially if you go there on Sunday, you get a treat then. What do you know? What is it like where you are at Walmart? Let's go back a little further. I just remember the sound of the impact. I was so afraid. Ever heard about the miracle of the Andes? Sure, you might know the story of survival against all odds, but there's more beneath the surface. Let's delve into the untold, the curious, and the downright astonishing aspects of this tale that remain largely unexplored. Ready for the journey? Number one, the silent survivor, Bobby Francois. In the heart of a story that has been told and retold, magnifying the resilience and courage of human spirit, lies a chapter less spoken of, Bobby Francois. Born in Montevideo on November 23, 1951, Bobby was 20 years old when fate cast him as a key character in one of the most harrowing survival stories of our time. Yet, unlike his fellow survivors, Bobby's story is one of silence and shadows, a stark reminder of the psychological scars borne by those who walk back from the brink. Bobby's ordeal during the 72 days in the Andes was marked not by acts of physical heroism, but by a profound internal struggle. While others rallied, scouted, and strategized, Francois was engulfed by a deep-seated apathy and depression. This wasn't a simple case of giving up. It was as if the very soul of him had retreated to a place where the cold, the hunger, and the despair couldn't reach. It's a state few can truly understand, survival not of the body but of the psyche, hanging by a thread. Post-rescue, Bobby's journey didn't follow the narrative of triumph and recovery that adorned the stories of his peers. Instead, he chose silence. The trauma of the ordeal had etched such a deep mark on his psyche that the very act of boarding an airplane was unbearable, requiring him to be anesthetized for the flight back to Uruguay. 
His silence extended beyond the fear of flying. It was a blanket refusal to acknowledge his participation in the ordeal. If approached and asked about the crash, he would deny his involvement, a coping mechanism to perhaps distance himself from memories too painful to relive. Bobby Francois chose a life far removed from the public eye, far from the civilization that could never truly grasp the depth of his experience. His story is a poignant reminder that survival comes in many forms. While some find strength in sharing in the communal processing of trauma, others, like Bobby, find solace in solitude, in the quiet spaces where the echoes of the past are not so loud. Number two, the little red shoe, a symbol of hope. In the vast, unforgiving expanse of the Andes, amidst the snow, the wreckage, and the despair, a small, inconspicuous object became a beacon of hope for the survivors of the crash. A little red shoe. This was no ordinary item. It was imbued with the love of a mother for her grandson, purchased during a stop in Mendoza before their fateful journey. The shoe belonged to Nando Parado's nephew, and though it was a simple piece of footwear, it transformed into a powerful symbol of hope and resilience for those stranded in the mountains. Nando shared one of these red shoes with fellow survivor Carlitos Paez, and together they clung to it as a tangible reminder of the world beyond their snowy prison, a world filled with color, warmth, and life. This little red shoe represented more than just the memory of a loved one. It symbolized the promise of return, a future where they could step beyond the confines of their current despair. The shoe's presence in the wreckage, captured in a haunting photograph, and its current place in the Andes 1972 Museum in Montevideo serve as lasting reminders of the ordeal. But more than that, they remind us of the human capacity to find light in the darkest of times. The survivor's attachment to these shoes speaks volumes about the power of hope, a small yet fierce flame that not even the cold could extinguish. Number 3. The Hidden Hotel, Missed Salvation just a stone's throw away from the desolate crash site, nestled in the Andean wilderness, stood Hotel Termas El Sosneado, a beacon of salvation that the survivors never knew existed. In 1972, this hotel was not operational, its doors closed to guests, but a caretaker lingered within its walls, potentially holding the key to the survivors' rescue. The tragic irony of their situation was that they were a mere day and a half or two days walk from this hidden refuge. Yet they remained unaware, their hopes cast further away towards Chile in the opposite direction. The survivors' belief that they had crashed in Chilean territory, a misconception fueled by the pilot's last words, led them away from the potential salvation that lay so tantalizingly close. The hotel, with its structural shelter and the possibility of assistance from the caretaker could have dramatically altered the fate of those stranded. Instead, it remained an untouched haven, its proximity a cruel twist of fate in the narrative of their survival. This near miss of the Hotel Termas El Sosneado underscores the harsh realities of survival, the role of information or the lack thereof, and the decisions made in the face of uncertainty. It also highlights the fine line between life and death in survival situations where a single piece of accurate information could mean the difference between rescue and continued peril. The survivor's trek, driven by the mistaken belief of nearing Chile, took them further into the wilderness, away from the unseen salvation that the hotel represented. It's a poignant reflection on the unpredictability of survival, where sometimes Salvation lies hidden just beyond our sight, obscured by the very nature that challenges us. Number four, the harrowing rescue operation. Yeah, that's crazy. But you know the question, would you have done it? Let me know. Would you have survived? Would you have taken that step? You know the one I'm talking about. If you've seen it, you know. Where do you stand there? Would you still be standing today? Let's go back to the sky. Look up, what is it? Where did it come from? And is it real? I don't think you should touch it.
It kind of looks like soap, huh? But I mean, just don't touch it. Cloud seeding. Yeah. Maybe? What do you think? It's pretty strange. But it's happening. Does anybody have any of this happening near you? I can't say that I've seen it around here. You never know. Looks like soap, huh? Well, that's a lot, whatever it is. That is crazy, man. Pretty creepy, huh? But it's happening. Don't know if it's happening everywhere, but where it is happening, it's pretty strange. Is it happening near you? What do you think? If you saw that, what would you do? Would you want to go touch it? I don't think so. Let me know. Did y'all ever see this photo that NASA put out of Earth in 2015? Now look a little more closely. Now before some of you tell me that I'm making this up, I got this directly from NASA's website and it's still there. Oh man. They just put it right out there. I'm sure it's just a coincidence. They put it out there and leave it. Who's going to challenge it? Nobody. There'll be a lot of conspiracy stuff going on, but that is it. Then they'll do it again. Just like they do. You know. Let's go see something else, though. Let's do something else right now. Here we go. Ice. It's like a serious shadow there. Look, because there are. No. Clear. Clear on one side. And not on the other. Wow. That was something, huh? What do you think? If you made it this far, thanks. And we loved having you here. If you're new, hit that subscribe button and join us for next time.
This is Tony. You have a good day. Bye.